Today, International Banker is joined by Mr. Oli Coyote Pitan, Managing Director and CEO of Bank of Industry, to discuss the financial inclusion in Nigeria, the country's SME sector, and the role that the bank plays in improving the economy of Nigeria. Very good to have you here, Oli. Thank you for inviting me. Now, let's start with the term financial inclusion. What does that mean to you? Is it simply about providing more access to banking services and credit, or is there more to it than that? Thank you very much. There is more to it. Uh, it goes beyond just provision of credit. We actually want more of our people, you know, to be using the financial system. In Nigeria, there's a lot of business, you know, the people we say it's not the formal business. We're trying to get them on board. Uh, aside from giving them the money, there are many advantages, you know, to be part of the international banking system and the local banking system. You know, uh, they have access to credit, you know, there are things they can do. So we are trying to get the money across to them, but we also want them to be part of the banking system because there are many advantages. What are some of the most effective ways in which Bank of Industry is currently promoting financial inclusion in Nigeria? How successful are they proving to be? The, the kind of many examples that you're thinking of. For now, we are working uh, with government. There is the JEEP program, the government empowerment, you know, uh, an entrepreneurship program that we are the one managing for the government. And the idea was to bring at least two million people on board very quickly. Working with a lot of fintech companies, we were able to achieve that figure. We go to the various states, uh, we onboard them, we, know, we take their statistics. Many of them had never used the banking system before. You know. So that way, you know, we've been able to bring about two million people on board. But these are women you know, uh, who are traders, these are vulcanizers, these are people who are doing small businesses. So if you bring two million people on board, you might actually be touching 10 million people. You know? So that's just one example of what we have done successfully. And in, in its efforts to boost financial inclusion in Nigeria, does Bank of Industry form strategic partnerships with organizations such as NGOs? And if so, have those partnerships proved to be fruitful? As a bank, you know, we are in about uh, 22 states in the country. We have 36 states. So even we don't have enough branch network you know, to do what we would like to do. So the way we have been able to manage and reach out to the people is by working with commercial banks, microfinance banks, and the NGOs. And they have proved to be very useful. For instance, in ABBA, the leather cluster, we work with Ford Foundation, you know, uh, capacity development for the people, onboarding them, you know, to give them facilities, it's worked very well. So the NGOs, you know, who have a stake or interest in financial inclusion or development, microfinance banks and commercial banks and merchant banks, we have worked with them. We have used their network to reach out to more people. There was no way we could have done what we did without working with those NGOs and other financial institutions. That's a great example of doing that. What do you think is the most single effective solution for boosting financial inclusion levels in Nigeria? Is that this solution something that Bank of Industry can adopt or is it currently adopting? It's a, a very interesting question. Now, uh, for those who have been lending to that segment of the market, they will tell you it's a very risky uh, kind of business to do. In some cases, we have seen losses, close to 100% of the money that we disbursed. But there are a lot of people in Nigeria, about 37 million you know, uh, MSMEs, you know, the micro and small medium enterprises, you know, how do you reach that number of businesses and people? The only way you can do that is through technology because even the government is in a hurry to reach out to the people. Some of the banks don't even have three million customers. So we've had to rely on technology to do what we have done. And technology will play a large part because nowadays you look at Nigeria, the number of Nigerians with mobile phones, you know, you can do a lot with mobile phones, you know. You can convert those mobile phones, you know, to a bank, mini banks, you know, and through that, you can reach a lot of people. The answer, in short form, is technology. Now, you mentioned your network and, and where that kind of reach is. Um, 
thinking of accessing the unbanked or the underbanked, do you consider your current branch network across Nigeria to be sufficient? Do you expect further branch expansion, like in, in physical bricks and mortar, as a, a future way of boosting financial inclusion, or is it all going to be down to tech? I think the, it's going to be down to tech. For instance, there are Nigerian banks that have uh, over a thousand branches. We have about 22, 24 branches. Now, if we were to decide to have a branch in every state, and let us even go further down, to have a branch in every local government, there are 774 local governments in Nigeria. That means we have about a thousand branches. For the size of the country, depending on who you are talking to, we are approaching 200 million people. That would be grossly inadequate. In the last three to four months, working with government, we've been able to give some kind of financial solutions to about 1.8 to 2 million people. So definitely the way to go is fintech. Brick and mortar is not going to solve the problem. And thinking of your kind of career in banking, which is over 30 years, uh, including roles at Citibank and FSB International Bank, from an internal culture perspective, what do you consider to be the most significant difference between working for commercial banks and working for a development finance institution? Also an interesting question. Uh, when I was in commercial and merchant or investment banking, you know, bottom line was number one. You, know, uh, you had targets, you know, and you were looking at how much dollars you've made. But when you work for a DFI, you know, and we are one, a development financial institution, the yardsticks, you know, uh, they go beyond money. You know, what is our impact, you know, uh, on people, you know, on their lives, the loans that we give out, you know, were we able to meet government targets in terms of our employment, in terms of uh, maybe reduction of foreign exchange, because if Nigerian companies can do some backward in integration, then they will demand less of foreign exchange, you know. So the parameters, you know, the, the, the things that we are looking at is a bit different. And for me, it's very fulfilling when I see a factory that was closed down before, that is back into production because of our assistance. I see people who are employed and we need to get a lot of Nigerian youths back to employment. Don't misquote me to say, well, is that all you're looking at? What about the bottom line? We're also making money. You know, my background in commercial banking tells me that, look, for us to do what we are doing and for it to be sustainable, we have to make decent profit. Last year, 2018, we have just published our accounts. We made about $100 million in profit. So the bank is profitable. But more importantly, you know, we are able to meet the other yardsticks, which is not only in terms of the profit figure that you have. So the focus is on uh, not just the bottom line, but the people. But also, of course, you've got um, a lot of MSME sector businesses in Nigeria. Do you think they're being adequately supported by Bank of Industry? And um, what are some of the most significant projects with which the bank has been involved in in recent times? That sector is, is large. You know, like I said, you're talking about 37 million, you know, uh, firms, you know, that fall into that category. You know, definitely they're not being served, you know, adequately, either by Bank of Industry or the whole industry. You know, we're trying to correct a few things in that sector. Most of the banks don't want to lend to them because it's a very risky sector. So we have to find a way to de-risk lending to that sector. We are talking to government, you know, some of our biggest insurance companies, to see how some of the losses, you know, uh, can be shared between Bank of Industry, the lending banks and the partner banks, you know, so that people can put money in that sector. We have increased the amount of money that we lend to that sector. You know, in the last three years, we must have you know, I think what we gave in last year was about five times what we gave about two, three years before. You know, but that is just scratching the surface. We would like to do more. Some of the other Nigerian banks would like to do more. But that sector, we need to de-risk it. You know, and that de-risking has to come from government. Because there are so many issues. For instance, because they are just coming into the financial system, 
they have no credit history. You know? So when you're even talking to insurance companies to say, what can we do? And they're asking for statistics. They're not available. They don't have a credit rating. So even to know how you're going to lend to them is difficult. But now through the fintech companies, you know, we are able to do things. Like for instance, when we have their telephone numbers with some algorithms that you know, people can run, we can know that this particular person can get credit up to a particular level, taking the other things that they do that we can have figures for, like telephone bills and things like that. So that's the future. You know, we can do more than what we have done, but there's still a lot of work to be done in that sector. And thinking of kind of innovation, new ideas, one of the bank's uh, most interesting products appears to be something called the Nolly Fund. Can you briefly explain some of the key features of that product? Now, uh, Nolly Fund is act was actually created to take care of Nollywood. Now, what is Nollywood? You know of Hollywood, which is the American one. You know of Bollywood, the Indian one. Then the Nollywood is the Nigerian film industry. We are number three in the world. Depending on who you are talking, they might say we are number four. That the Chinese, you know, are much, probably much bigger than people give them credit for. But that sector is huge. And there's a lot of people who are engaged in that creative sector, in the film industry. Most of them could not access facilities from normal commercial banks. Because they are creative people, they have ideas. Sometimes all they have is the script of a film, and you come to a bank, you're trying to get a facility. So we came up with a product whereby we can lend money to them, you know, to make their ideas come to life. And that's the idea of Nolly Fund. You know, initially it was about one billionaire, you know, but as of today, our portfolio in that sector is over 20 billionaire. So it's about 20 times the Niger concept that we had, because we've been very successful. Uh, some of the good films, you know, coming out of Nigeria today, you know, were financed, you know, uh, by Bank of Industry. And we are proud of that. Through the Nolly Fund. Through the Nolly Fund. Here's another one, trader money. What is trader money and what role does Bank of Industry play in the development of this program? Trader money was a government uh, product, you know. Initially, you know, it's part of the, the Jeep, you know. The government wanted to empower a lot of Nigerians. The idea was... If these guys had no access to facilities, why don't we as government give them small loans, 10,000 naira, $30, $50 without security for about six months? That way, you are bringing them into a financial system. It's part of financial inclusion. It's part of financial empowerment. It's part of financial entrepreneurship. You know? And the government gave us a target of 2 million Nigerians. So it was a loan of 10,000 naira, you know, over a six month period, interest free, without collateral, you know, that we were able to disburse to about 2 million Nigerians. And the funding came from government. The manager of that was Bank of Industry. And the, the network that we used, the backbone was FinTech. And it was quite successful. Now, another thing that the bank's recently made clear is its intent to play a pretty major role in developing economic zones within Nigeria. What do you see as being some of the main benefits, both to Bank of Industry and the country itself, of creating such zones? Well, if you talk to people who are in the industrial sector, they will tell you things about power, you know, uh, the cost of power, infrastructure, you know. So what that means ultimately, is that the cost of production becomes too high. The products will not be able to compete with imported products. So the idea of the industrial zones is to have some particular sectors of the, of the country, and we're talking of having one in the south, one in the southeast, one in the north, to start out with, where everything is provided within that zone. You know, power is there, water is there, Infrastructure is provided, you know, so you rent at minimal cost. It brings down your cost of production and it makes more Nigerians to be employed. You know, we have seen, we've gone around, you know, uh, there are parks in China, even in Ethiopia that is working very well. 
So the idea is to see how we can make it work in Nigeria. You know, it can be used for the textile industry. It can be used for different kinds of things. That's the idea. And Bank of Industry wants to be part of those who will make that to happen. When you're setting out lots of kind of ambitions, what is the one goal above all others that you hope Bank of Industry will have achieved by the end of 2019? And, and why is it so important? By the end of 2019, uh, it's a sh that is short, but yes, there are things we would like to achieve. Uh, I was uh, appointed as MDCEO about two years ago. And my target was to double the balance sheet of the bank within three years. We're close to that, you know. Uh, I think we've done about uh, maybe 60-70%. The bank is more profitable. Because of the need that I see in the industrial sector and the paucity of the funding available, you know, I'm driving myself and the bank, you know, to raise a lot of money. You know, last year we were successful. We were trying for the, for the very first time. We went out to the international market to raise money. The plan was to raise $500 million but it was oversubscribed because the bank is well run. You know, we have a Fitch rating, we have a Moody's rating. Local ratings, we are double A. You know, we raised $750 million. Last year, we must have raised over a billion dollars. I would like to raise a billion dollars this year. You know, uh, I would like to do more than we have done last year because more Nigerian factories, more Nigerian industrialists need our services. Most of the loans we provide at Bank of Industry, the pricing is 10%. The average cost of funds, if you are borrowing from Nigerian banks, is between 20 and 30%. So we want to bring down that cost. We want to make our industries, you know, to be more viable, more profitable, so they can expand. And ultimately, we want the teaming Nigerians who are unemployed now to be employed. So that's, that's a kind of target for the end of 2019. But as MD, CEO of Bank of Industry, what's the biggest challenge ahead of you that you hope to accomplish before you finish this role? You see, the Bank of Industry is owned by Nigerian government. Our two major shareholders, you know, is Federal Ministry of Finance and Central Bank of Nigeria. The normal perception about government-owned institutions is that they are not well run. At the end of my tenure, I want to have left a bank that though is owned by government, is run like a private bank with staff who are well trained, who can compete with, you know, and have the same quality as staff of any good DFI anywhere in the world. I want to leave a bank that is profitable and is actually fulfilling its mandate of helping industries to expand, to grow, and to revive the ones that are dead, you know? And of course, I would like to be able to leave successors who can do better than I have done. So I would say I have played my part. Great vision, good luck with that. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time today. My pleasure.